Excellencies, colleagues, friends. I'm really happy to be able to send this message to you on the 8th of March, the International Women's Day. Portugal's presidency of the European Union is not only important within the European Union and its member states, it also has an impact here at the UN and the UN's member states. I am in frequent contact, therefore, with the Portuguese UN ambassador and his mission. I can tell that the Portuguese commitment to gender equality is genuine. This year, 8th of March, is not just any year. It is marked by one year of a COVID crisis. It's been a sad year. Many of us have lost dear and near friends and family. We also know that the socioeconomic consequences of the crisis have hit women harder than men. In spite of the fact of women leading and literally saving the lives of the rest of us through their work in the health sector, in elderly care, in pharmacies, in labs, in grocery stores. We also know that other women have been hard hit by unemployment and other negative effects of the COVID crisis. For us at the UN Women and the UN, therefore, it's a good opportunity to raise these issues and for the world to come together in the next few days at the Commission on the Status of Women, which is actually the UN's biggest meeting after the General Assembly, and it's definitely the world's biggest meeting on gender equality issues. This year's topic is women's leadership in politics, in public life, and civil society leadership, which obviously is much needed in a post-COVID world. We believe that this will be a good opportunity for the world's countries, member states to come together and discuss how can they do more to achieve the gender equality goals and to actually implement women's rights. It is more needed than ever. It is actually a gender equality crisis going on in the world. We know when we took stock last year that a lot still needs to be done. Many governments have come up with good legislation and progressive reforms to a much larger extent than, let's say, 10 years ago. However, the implementation is lacking and the funding is lacking. The political will has been lacking. From UN Women's side, we think that the Commission on the Status of Women will be an important push to both remind of the effects of the COVID crisis, but also to use that knowledge from these 25 years and the fact that we have to accelerate if we want to reach these, these goals. But we're not only doing that. We have also taken an initiative called Generation Equality. That is an initiative for those member states, private sector, experts, civil society, and young women and men who want to go faster and who want to push for implementation of gender equality in the world and who also want to commit and find funding for these important initiatives at a greater speed and with more vigor than we have seen before. So we have taken that initiative which will come immediately after the Commission on the Status of Women, starting with one gathering in Mexico City called the Generation Equality Forum, and the next Generation Equality Forum in Paris in June will safeguard that we have six areas of action that the world will gather around. We are very happy that Portugal and, of course, uh, the European Union is also partnering with us and specifically on violence against women. 
Thank you again for having me today and thank you for committing to gender equality and to accelerate implementation. It is much needed and I feel very inspired by this gathering today. Good luck.